الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد Having the ruh of Quran to your heart is giving life to you. Let me share a secret with you. Of all the pleasures you can have in this world, whether it's um, being married, first few nights of marriage, those time you bought a house, you got a really nice car you always wanted, uh, you went on a holiday, you went to the beach, you went to some... All the pleasures of the world. But you know the satisfaction, the love, the feeling of being connected to Allah through the Quran and his ayat everything else equals zero sometimes you may have a you may have a you know a, a whiff of it smell of it see it a little bit feel it a little bit and then you're constantly just chasing that back it's like drowning and come back up you grab it come back up and then you're drowning back down again and you get some life again going back down again it's a struggle. It's a struggle. Let's start the next session, inshallah, which is the aims and functions of the Quran. First one is to deeply reflect and be reminded. Tadabbur and tadakkur. Allah Azza wa Jalla says, Kitabun anzalnahu ilayka mubarakun liyadabbaru ayatihi wa liyatadakkaru ulul albab. Here is a book which we have sent down to you full of blessings, Mubarak, that you may reflect deeply on its ayat. ayatihi. So you may reflect deeply about its signs. The men of understanding may be reminded by it. When you when you did your talawa, you're you're reminded by the, the truths that it brings. Nature of us being forgetful. In childhood, somebody gives you a pencil. This pencil somebody gave you. They give you a pencil. You take the pencil. You see it. They say, thank you. Shukran. Jazakallah khair. You feel, you know, you, I'm so, I really appreciate this top quality Stedler pencil. But by the rubber and everything, it's the best pencil I could have. Thank you very much. Take the pencil. You put it into your drawer. You forget about it. The person that gave you, he was, his name was Abdullah. Nice brother. You forget Abdullah, you forget the pencil, you forget everything. Ten years later, you see the pencil and it reminds you of Abdullah. I remember Abdullah, that very nice brother, mashallah, you know, and, and you, you remember the feeling you had that day when he, he gave you that pencil. So the pencil was a trigger, is a sign for you for that, reminding you of what you already know from before. Hassan said, the people before you considered the Quran to be correspondence from their Lord. So they would ponder by it by night and by day. Imam Ghazali said, the type of tilawah that takes me a week to finish, and there's a kind of tilawah that takes me a month, and there's a kind of tilawah that takes me a type of reading of the Quran that takes me a year to finish, and there's still another type of recitation or reading of the Quran that I started 30 years ago, but I'm not yet completed. Because one of the, the wisdoms of the, of the tilawah of the Qur'an, especially for those who know the Arabic language. And that's why there's an importance to know the Arabic language. Cover to cover, cover to cover, cover to cover. Again, 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 again. You're repeating, you're repeating the ayat again and again. The way the ayat are constructed, you have ayat which are connected to each other, but they may be spread over different parts of the Qur'an the story of Adam and Iblis and, and each time different aspects of the story of Adam and Iblis is mentioned so they're connected now obviously when they were being revealed they were being revealed over a period of time there's a timeline human beings produce a article for learning they make bullet points they say this means this and this means this and this means this and they make it systematically and chronologically right so you give it to somebody, somebody learns it, he's learned it. Once he's learned it, he's past that stage. He goes to something else. Like you won't give a textbook that's for a college student to a person who did a degree. He's past it, he just, he's moved on. And had the Quran been given to people in that way, its lessons and its ajaib and its miracles would have also ended. Because people in one generation would have finished. Its lessons would have finished. But because the Qur'an is for there as a miracle, 
And as a sign for people at the time of the Prophet, to now, ila yawm al because this is the last sign, last big sign from Allah, it has to then cater for everybody at every time, in every age, in every location. So this is the wisdom behind the ayat being like the way they are. And this is the wisdom of you then going on the Quranic journey in your tadabbur of the Quran. لَيَدَبَّرُوا آيَاتِهِ So you keep reflecting. Just like a friend, he doesn't share his secrets with you until you spend some time with him. The Quran will not share its secrets with you until you spend some time with it. Imam Anwar, when he was released from prison, he wrote, This was during my first two months in the, in the political security jail. This was a time when I was allowed no visitors, no contact with family, and no contact with other prisoners. In fact, I wasn't even allowed to speak to the prison guards except in whispers and only for urgent needs. This was a time of complete isolation from the outside world. I was in an underground solitary cell made up of four concrete walls with an iron gate on one side and on the opposite side a small window, rather a hole covered with iron mesh to allow for some fresh air to come in. I couldn't see much from it because it was about four meters high. There was the roof with a bulb hanging from it and it was continuously day and night. It was, it, which, was, which was on continuously day and night. Then, there was, then the floor with a mattress two to three inches thick, a blanket, a worn-off pillow, a plastic plate, a bottle of water and an empty bottle just, for, just in case. And then there was the Qur'an. In this environment, there's nothing to do and nothing to read but the Qur'an. And that is when the Qur'an reveals its secrets. When the hearts are clean, when there's nothing clouding the spirit, the Qur'an literally overwhelms the heart. I have never in my life felt the Qur'an so strongly. Thoughts, insights and feelings that I would fail to describe would come with every new ayah that I would recite. Reading the Qur'an was nothing would not, was not something I would force upon myself, but I would recite it with eagerness for hours at end and never lose my concentration. The, the surah of the Qur'an, the chapters of the Qur'an would carry me outside of this world and I would completely forget about my situation until a warden would slam the door, open for restroom time or take me for inter interrogation. Then I would wake up again to the depressing reality of this world. So a question, does the Qur'an speak to us differently in, in, in prison. We approach the Quran with a, we approach Quran with a more receptive heart when we are being tested. We are also come to understand the Quran better when we are separated from the distractions of this world. Both of these two elements exist in prison. One thing I came to realize is that the Qur'an does not open up its secrets to you unless you open your heart to it. Qur'an does not spill its pearls to the undeserving. Ibn Taymiyyah wrote while he was in jail that he had been reciting the Qur'an and reflecting on its meaning and that Allah had, or Allah has opened up the meaning of the Qur'an for him. He said he learned new meanings that scholars would wish to learn. He had learned from its meanings he had never thought of before and he went further to state that he regretted the time he spent in the past learning other aspects of knowledge and not focusing on the Book of Allah. Within a short period of time he had spent, he said he had read the Quran from cover to cover 80 times. This was due to the blessings of him being in prison. As, as, as Allah says, you might dislike a thing and, and it is good for you. During that blessed period of two months, I was free of any distraction except for the interrogation worries. That is when I came to understand the statement of Uthman when he said, if the hearts are pure, they will ne never satisfy from, the th from their thirst from the Book of Allah. Th those moments are, are so strange to me now and so different that they do not seem to be a reality or even a far away memory, but rather seem to be a dream. 
We ask you, O oh Allah, to make us of those who love your words and contemplate upon them. First function we have listed here is that the Quran came for us to do the double of its ayah. Reflect, think. Second function is that the Quran will guide and the Quran will misguide. Allah Azza wa Jalla says, Inna Allah la yastahi an yadriba mathala ma ba'udatan fa ma fawkaha. فَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا فَيَعْلَمُونَ أَنَّهُ الْحَقُّ مِنْ رَبِّهِمْ وَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا فَيَقُولُونَ مَاذَا أَرَادَ اللَّهُ بِهَذَا مَثَلًا يُذِلُّ بِهِ كَثِيرًا وَيَهْدِي بِهِ كَثِيرًا وَمَا يُذِلُّ بِهِ إِلَّا الْفَاسِقِينَ Allah Azawajal guides by it, the Quran, and Allah misguides by it. So Allah Azawajal, he's not shy to give, an, give a simile, give an example, and that of a mosquito or what that's what's more than that as for those who believe then then, then they realize this is when Allah is, is revealing this ayat this is haq from Allah as for those who disbelieve they ask a question I don't understand what did he mean by that فَأَمَّا لِذِنَا كَفَرُوا فَيَقُولُونَ مَاذَا أَرَادَ اللَّهُ بِهَذَا مَثَلُ I don't understand what did Allah mean by this they're confused by this simile they're confused by Allah's ayat they see, but yet they do not see. They hear, but yet they do not hear. They don't understand. But Allah says, "Yudillu be he. He misguides with it the many, and he guides by it many. So, so those who Allah does not want to guide, because guidance equals what? Jannah. And misguidance equals what? You're not coming to my house. You are not coming to my house. Jannah is my house. And you don't deserve to come to my house. So you are not going to be guided. I don't decree for you to be guided. May Allah protect us and guide us all. What's the sign that he's guiding you? What's the sign that he's guiding you? Quran. That you are understanding the Quran. And what's the sign that he's misguiding you? Or oh, there's some problem. You don't understand Quran. May Allah guide us all. Allah Azza wa Jal has said in the Quran, He turns people away from His ayah. Allah says, Allah says, ayats those who are arrogant, <coughs> arrogant on earth. Whether you're a government, you're a person, I will turn you away from my ayat. You want to understand the laws of physics? This is the law of Allah. He will turn away from his ayat, those who have kibber in the land, to the degree that what does Allah say? That if they see every ayah, wa in kulla ayatin, they see every ayah, they will not believe in it. Guidance is from Allah. He will either turn you to it or turn you away from it. Like we said before, you ayat cannot show you something that you don't have within yourself. They can't point to something that you don't have within yourself. Of Allah, like the concept of Allah is dead in your heart, then the ayat are dead for you. If it's alive in your heart, it'll be alive for you. If you remember Allah, you'll be alive. And the simile of the one who remembers Him, dhikr of Him, and the one who does not, is the simile between the living and the dead thirdly Allah Azza wa Jal will put a barrier to make sure you don't understand Allah Azza wa says وَإِذَا قَرَأْتَ الْقُرْآنَ جَعَلْنَا بَيْنَكَ وَبَيْنَ الَّذِينَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْآخِرَةِ هِجَابَ مَسْتُورًا وَجَعَلْنَا عَلَى قُلُوبِهِمْ أَكِنَّةً أَنْ يَفْقَهُهُ وَفِي آدَانِهِمْ وَقْرَى and when you Tell or recite the Quran to the people and tell them about the ayat of Allah and the guidance of Allah Azza wa Jal. We put between you and those who don't believe in the akhirah a hijab. And we put over their, their, their hearts a covering to ensure they don't understand. وَجَعَلْنَا عَلَىٰ قُلُوبِهِمْ On their hearts. Allah puts upon their hearts then. So hijab between them. And a, and, and, and a covering upon their hearts to ensure they don't understand. 
no matter what you present to them, no matter what you show them, no matter what you tell them. However, when we're in the concept of giving da'wah, you, your job is to make it clear, make it plain. You are like, you're like the postman, you're like the delivery man who get a recorded delivery. Just make sure they get it assigned to them. They follow it, don't follow it. You will be a source. Your makiyama, day of trial, Allah says, I sent my, my person to you. And he told you, like Sutta Zumar, did not I want to come to you? Did not want to come to you? Reciting upon the ayat of Allah, and you disbelieved? Did not want to come to you? So they're going to say, yes. We are the messengers of the messenger. The messengers and the prophets come to be those delivery men. And when the last messenger came, his ummah inherited that from him. The responsibility <coughs> that they've got the message. Another ayah of Surah Ali Imran, Allah says to the Prophet, Don't get upset and depressed and by, the, by those who are running towards kufr. Talking about some of the people who are within the Muslims. Nifaq. Don't get depressed by these people. Innahum, them, they can't harm Allah. Saying things which are completely against Islam, hiding their kufr in the robes of Islam. Allah says, don't get saddened by them doing, running towards kufr. Allah desires that he does not give them anything in the akhirah. Next point. Battle between haq and batil. <coughs> between that which is true and that which is false. Ideas which are true, ideas which are false. No, notions which are true, notions which are false. Haq wa batil. <clears throat> and he, Allah Azza wa Jalla has done this to the Quran using his words. Wa yuridu Allahu an yuhiqqa al-haqqa bi kalimati. He desires to make the truth as the truth by his words. Wa yaqta adabir al-kafirin. So that his words are proven to be true. And Allah just says, وَقُلْ جَاءَ الْحَقُّ وَزَهَقَ الْبَاطِلِ And say that the truth has come and batil has, has vanished. And this is one of my favorite ayat as well. Is, بَلْ نَقْذِفُ بِالْحَقِّ عَلَى الْبَاطِلِ فَيَذْمَغُهُ فَإِذَا هُوَ زَاهِقِ We, uh, in an Arabic, is what translated now to be like a missile. We throw a missile, of, you know, a precision missile, hit something, to hit a target. We throw a missile of haq upon batil, striking it straight at his head or his brains and his core, and then knocking it out. It just, let's just break down what haq and batil is. Haq are the definitions. Haq on one side is truth, purpose. Haq is unquestionable. Conviction, exactly, precisely, valid, true. That's haq. What's, true, what's proved to be haq is proved to be true, it proves to be uh, exact, proves to be precise, etc. What's batil, on the other hand, is what's proved to be false, baseless, or opposite of haq, not true, worthless, no point, comes to no point, or invalidate. وَمَا خَلَقْنَا السَّمَاءَ وَالْأَرْضَ وَمَا بَيْنَهُمَا بَاطِلًا We did not create the heaven and the earth for batil reasons, for nothing. We created all these galaxies and all these stars and all these, all the, the, the mammals and all the fish. We created that for, bat, for nothing. By even a small study, you'd know everything functions with purpose. That's haq. To say it doesn't is batil. To say that he created it for no reason is batil. Gradation, the gradation we have of ilm of ilm, stages of uh, how we attain complete yaqeen. We have a stage where it's shak. You have shak about something. You have a doubt about something. Somebody says that there's a fire. Okay? Now, we've got, we doubt it, and we feel that this information someone told us is not actually true. Ill is those statements which are true but need support and evidence to make this knowledge 
free of any shock. So ilm, knowledge, is that which is true, but you need some more information. I may still have some doubt in my heart. I may have some rage in my heart. Above ilm is ilm al-yaqeen. Now, ilm al-yaqeen is a conclusive evidence, a fact beyond doubt, based on ilm. So you know smoke comes from a fire, so you see smoke. So then by the necessary implication, there must be a fire. You've seen smoke. You know smoke comes from fire. Above Ilm al yakin is Ain al yakin Is now you've seen the fire. So you know there's a, you know it was true. The information you got, somebody came and told you there's a fire, then you saw the smoke, then you went and saw the fire. When you see the fire, that's Ain al yakin because now you've seen it with your own eyes. Above Ain al yakin is Haq al yakin You got burnt. The fire actually burnt you. That's like a complete, your level of, uh, of, of certainty has reached its complete. Where you completely believe. Quran, my dear brothers, is Haqq al -yakin. Quran is Haqq al -yakin. It is completely, fully true and you have certainty. Quranic journey is a journey of discovery. discovery. The Quran will take you from this level where you have shock. Allahu waliyu ladina amanu yukhrijuhum min al dhulumati ila nur. They take you from the, the shades of darknesses. So these, so these are like the shades of darknesses. Shock, right? These are all different things. Where you doubt something. It'll take you from there and give you some khabar and give you some ilm and the ilm can be ilm al-yaqeen, ilm al-yaqeen and then it'll take you to the point where you believe in Allah Azza wa Jal so strongly you have iman in Him The Qur'an will help every individual It's got the potential to help every individual should you choose to want it and Allah guides you and guides us, may Allah guide us Amen. It'll help you when you're keen about the malaika, about the akhirah, about yom qiyamah, it gives you that yakin. It is the weapon between haqq and batil. Quran is the weapon. فَلَا تُطِعَ الْكَافِرِينَ وَجَاهِدْهُمْ بِهِ جِهَادًا كَبِيرًا Don't obey the kuffar. Don't obey them. وَجَاهِدْهُمْ بِهِ Struggle against them. Fight against them. بِهِ Look, with the Qur'an, jihad and kabira, a great jihad. Struggle against them with this Qur'an, wajahidhum bihi, with the Qur'an, jihad and kabira. Make a jihad with them, struggle against them, with this, a great fight, great struggle. So this is the weapon of the believer. This is the weapon between haqq and batil. This is the, the tool that you use when to, to prove something which is false. Now, chapter 2. <coughs> the Prophet's Quranic journey. The Prophet himself was on the Quranic journey. And we will look at the effects of the ayat on the human personality. So let's look at let's look at it as an overview. We'll take how how the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allahumma Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Mubarak ala Sayyidina wa Habibina Muhammad, how he was uh, affected by the Quran. So initially, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was scared. He was scared for his sanity. He was scared for his life. So his initial relationship, his initial reaction to the ayat was very scared. Then, or you could say, after this period of time, he began to love the Quran in terms of reciting it, contemplating upon it, Memorizing it. And in the section that I've given you in your notes, uh, you can refer to, uh, initially for when he was scared, you can refer to Surah Al-Muzammil and Surah Al-Mudathir. When he began to start living the Qur'an, you can refer to Ayat from Surah Taha and Al-Qiyamah. To the point where even Aisha radiallahu anha said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam 
and one of the nights he spent the whole night reciting one ayah. He was reflecting on the whole night, one ayah. Then he became eager for more, to, more revelation to come to him, more revelation to come to him. And you can refer to Surah Ibn Maryam for this. Uh, it was, a, it was a, journey, a journey of what? Discovery. So he, would, he, as Allah just says, that he did not know what was Iman before. He did not know what the Iman in Akhirah, and Iman in Jannah and, Jah- and Jahannam and so forth. This was a journey for him also. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He's amazing tilawa of the Quran. One of the Sahaba said that I, I came into the... Uh, I came for the Maghrib Salah, and when the Prophet reached certain ayat from Surah Tur, he described it by himself, I felt as if my heart was about to fly. When he reached certain ayat, the certain point of Surah Tur, Am khuliku min ghayri shay'in, am humul khaliqun, am khuliku, am khaliqu samawat wal arda la, bal la yukinu. As the, as the uh, ayat translates, were they created from nothing, or were they themselves created? This reached a certain point of tilawah. The Prophet wasallam would cry prof- profoundly from the Quran. This is an amazing incident actually. When you hear about this, you, you'll cry. If you hear about it, you'll cry. When Aisha was telling the story, she, she was crying. This, it was described that um, the, uh, the Ata'a said, this, this is found in Ibn Kathir, in the tafsir of this ayat which we'll, which we'll mention. He said, I, Ibn Umar, and Ubaid ibn Umair, three, three men, because we went to Aisha and entered her room. And there was a hijab between us and her. And they, they started speaking. And then Umar, Ibn Umar radiallahu anhu said, he asked Aisha, he said, he said, tell us something amazing that you witnessed with the Messenger of Allah. This is after the Prophet had passed away. Tell us something amazing you, tell us something amazing about the Prophet. She started to cry. She said, she goes, all his, all his affairs were amazing. One night, he came close to me, and he, you know, he lay next to her, and until his skin touched my skin, that's how close we were. This was her night, of the nights of the wives of the Prophet. So he said, asking her permission, he said, basically tonight, let me give me permission to I want I want to worship Allah tonight so she said by Allah I love your being close to me and I also love that you worship your Lord meaning to, okay although it's her night the Prophet was was too emotionally affected he was, he was emotionally affected by what what had happened that night so she said, as much as I would love you to be with me, close to me, i love for you too. So, okay. So she said that, I did, she described the Prophet did wudu with small amounts. So he started doing wudu. Then he stood in salah and cried until his beard was wet. And then he did sujood until the ground became wet. And then he lay down on the side and cried. When Bilal radiallahu anhu came to tell him that it's time for Fajr, he said, O Messenger of Allah, what makes you cry while Allah has forgiven you your past and previous sins? So he said, O Bilal, what prevents me from crying when this night when Allah has revealed, Inna fi khalq samawati wal ardi wa ikhtilaf al layli wal nahari la ayat li ulil albab, alladhin yadkuruna Allah qiyama wa qu'uda wa. The last, last one and a half pages of Surah Ali Imran about the believer and the ayat for the believer and when he will end, and when the person who doesn't believe will enter the fire and those on Yom Qiyamah they speak about, Oh Allah, you know. Uh, give us for what you promised us and the promise of Allah Azza wa Jal and then they will enter Jannah. It was so profound and then Allah, the Prophet said, woe to he who recites it and does not contemplate upon it. The, one of the companions described, he said, I saw the messenger of Allah and he was praying and his chest sounded like the boiling water due to him crying. This is how the Prophet was when he was affected by this ayah. 
May Allah Azza wa allow us to be affected by his ayah. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he felt the heavy responsibility of executing the commands of Allah and this even affected his health. The ayat affected his health. Um, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu once, he said to the Messenger of Allah, Oh Messenger of Allah, I've seen you looking old. He goes, I've become old to, due to Surah Al-Hud, Al-Waqi'ah, Al-Mursalat, Amma Yatasa'alun, and Wa'idha shum, shum, Shumsu Kubr. These surahs that have come to me, they've made me old. The person who knows about Jannah, not just knows, I mean, he's, every cell testifies to Jannah, he's a worried man. Why? Because he realizes, I'm wasting my time doing this, I'm wasting my time doing that, I'm not doing that in the best way, I'm not doing that in the best way, he regrets. He regrets. Am I doing this right properly? Am I doing that right properly? I'm not, I'm not getting... Because he knows, I know the consequence of my actions are going to equal my reward and I'm not doing well enough. He's critical about himself. They were affected by the responsibility and the truthfulness, the truthfulness of the... Um, of, of what is said by Allah Azza wa Let me give you an example of what happened to Umar radiallahu anhu once. Umar, they say he was, uh, I think he was either riding his uh, camel or horse or whatever, and he heard someone reciting, or he was already walking, he heard someone reciting some ayat from Surah Tur. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Wa Tur, wa Kitab al Mastur, fi Rakkin Manshur, wal Bayt al Ma'amur, wa Sakfi al Marfu, wal Bahr al Masjur, wal Bahr al Masjur, inna alaba rabbika la waqi. So, Wa Tur, by the Man Tur, the Kitab which is uh, written, in preserved uh, parchment and what Bayt al Ma'mur, the, the uh, frequented house of, uh, in the heavens, and the, and the heaven which is uh, the sky which is raised high, and the, the ocean which is on fire. Indeed, the punishment of your Lord is definitely going to happen. Now, in Arabic, in English, you don't appreciate this, but when you look at the words in Arabic, in a different, like, uh, 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 emphasis, adab, punishment, rabbika, your Lord. You know, the punishment of your Lord, your Rabb, your, it will definitely happen. When Umar heard that, he became ill. They say for a month. To the degree where people were visiting him. Because he couldn't take it. He was so affected, he was so affected by the fact that I'm being told it's definitely going to happen. The, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in his, also in his relationship with the Qur'an would also be corrected by the Qur'an. So, where is there any shortcomings in, in the behavior of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Allahumma Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Mubarak ala Sayyidina wa Muhammad that if there was anything in terms of we're human beings, we're not malaika, we're not angels. And he was the best, the best of men to walk on this earth. So when the best of men is trying to do <coughs> as a human does, there's going to be some points where it's not as, where there could be decisions that a person makes, which is not between being a sin and not being a sin, it's between, it's a judgment call. A judgment call. Like, Abasa wa tawalla, a blind man comes, he turns away. The Prophet wasallam became the living form of walking Qur'an. His actions, his breathing, his talking, his walking, his commanding, his forbidding, his likes, his dislikes. He became a spirit of a walking Qur'an. Somebody came to Aisha radiallahu anha and he said, tell me, about the akhlaq of the Prophet, the, the mannerisms and the personality of the Prophet. So she said to him, don't you read the Quran? He said, yes. She said, a character of the Prophet was the Quran. The heart is the key to understanding the Quran. The heart is the key to understand the Quran. Allah Azza wa Jal says, أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ أَمْ عَلَىٰ قُلُوبٍ أَقْفَالُهَا 
that do they not reflect to do tadabbur, reflect deeply upon the Quran, or are they upon their hearts locks? So the state and the condition of the heart will determine the levels of understanding of the Quran. Underline that point if you've got the notes in front of you as well. Will determine the level, the level of understanding. Just in the Quran, in my count, my own personal count, in describing the different states of the Qalb, I stopped at 50. 50 different conditions that Allah speaks about the Qalb in the Quran. And we'll go through some of them that we've pointed out here. In understanding of the Quran, uh, the levels are going to be vast between how people and how, how much people understand of the Quran. The more sins that you do, the more confusion that will beset you. That's the condition of the heart. Only when the Quran enters or descends upon the Qalb will you benefit. The first condition is that Allah speaks about or in reference to the Qalb is that this is where your aql resides. Allah just said, لَهُمْ قُلُوبٌ لَا يَفْقَهُونَ بِهَا They have hearts but they don't understand. So this is the organ of understanding. So you, if your heart is diseased or dead, then how much can you understand? Allah just says, وَتَبَعَ عَلَىٰ قُلُوبِهِمْ فَهُمْ لَا يَفْقَهُونَ We stamp upon the heart so they don't understand. He doesn't look at your condition of your bodies. He sees the condition of your hearts. And he will determine for you, give you, deprive you from what he finds in you, in your heart. A veil. As we spoke about this ayah before, about how Allah Azza wa Jal وَجَعَلْنَا عَلَىٰ قُلُوبِهِمْ أَكِنَّا And then uh, before, between them and when you say Quran to them, there's a hijab over them. When you put a hijab over something, like you, if, I, if, I, if I put it in front of my face, you can't see my face. So, يَا مُقَلِّبُ الْقُلُوبِ ثَبِّتْ قَلْبِ عَلَىٰ دِينِكْ Oh, the one who changes hearts in their conditions, from condition to condition. Make my heart firm on your deen. Allah also describes the heart as summun bukmun umyu. Deaf, dumb, and blind. Can't hear, no sound. So you could have the loudest sound being played, all sounds, and if you can't hear sound, it means whatever sentences you're telling somebody, no matter how descriptive you are, how descriptive you are, how strong your argument is, no matter what you say, the person's deaf. He don't hear you. His heart don't hear you. Because that's a condition Allah puts his heart in. Allah protect us and guide us and our families. The hearts can't see. Allah says, فَإِنَّمَا لَا تَعْمَلْ أَبَصَارِ It's not that the hearts are blind, it's not that the eye, their eyes are blind. وَلَكِنْ تَعْمَلْ قُلُوبُ الَّتِي فِي الصُّدُورِ But it's their heart that are blind that are in their chest. It's the hearts that become blind. The hearts become blind. So when you're showing something that they can't see what you're saying, telling them, they can see what you're telling them, but their hearts can't see what you're telling them. فَآقَبَهُمْ نِفَاقًا فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ إِلَىٰ يَوْمِ يَلْقَوْنَهُمْ That he punished them by giving them nifaq in their hearts until the day they meet him. When they didn't do what they were supposed to do, he then punished them. And the punishment that came upon them as a consequence of that the nifaq got into their hearts. خَتَمَ عَلَىٰ قُلُوبِهِمْ Allah will seal his heart. He sealed their hearts. And when you seal something, what happens when you seal it? Let nothing go in. It's sealed. Khatam. فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ مَرَضٌ فَزَادَهُمُ اللَّهُ مَرَضًا Their hearts are diseased. They're ill. And then Allah has increased their disease. ثُمَّ قَسَتْ قُلُوبُكُمْ Their hearts become hard. Their hearts are soft. Ground is soft. You plant something, it grows. But if the heart is hard, you become, it becomes hard for you to understand. Hard for you things to grow. That these people, and we're talking specifically about the Bedouins and Sultan Hujarat, that these people, Iman did not enter their hearts. So Iman is where? It's in the Qalb. And also Kufr also, and they drank with their hearts their Kufr for their, for their worship of the Jews when they, when they did. The Prophet وسلم, said that in the body, there is a piece of flesh. If it is sound, the whole body is sound. 
And if it is corrupt, then the whole body is corrupt. And that indeed, that it is, it is the heart. Your heart is what connects you to Allah Azza wa Jal. The weak heart has a weak connection. The strong heart has a strong connection. The Prophet wasallam said, Indeed, Allah does not look at your appearances, your biceps, your clothes, your, uh, your nice hair, not your thobe, not the way you wear your imama or your hats. Inna Allah la yanzuru ila suwarikum wa amwalikum. Know your wealth, know the cars that you drive, or the houses you have, or the shops that you have, or the businesses that you run. This is not the, you could say, this is not the, the focus of Allah's attention, if you want to say it that, in that way. Walakin yanzuru ila qulubikum wa a'malikum. But he looks at the conditions of your hearts and your actions. That's what he's looking for. That's what he's looking at. But know that Allah does not answer the du'a from, an, from, a, from a heart that's ghafil and inattentive. So even when you're making du'a to Allah, he does not, Allah, the Prophet said that he does not answer the du'a of the heart that's ghafil. So what's the relationship between the, uh, the iman in Allah, the Quran, and the heart? So the more alive and close you are to Allah Azza wa Jal, it is, it is reciprocal to you understanding His words in the Quran. The more alive and close you are to Allah, the more you'll understand His words. How can you understand the speech of a speaker not know or you have no connection to? So the more connected you are to Him, the more you'll understand. So there's a golden rule there, you can see in bold. The stronger and more developed your connection is to Allah, the greater understanding you will have of His words. Tazkiyah, which is the cleansing of your nafs and the qalb. Tazkiyah, concept of tazkiyah, purification of the soul. It is key, and in actuality, it, is, it precedes the learning of the book. Allah Azza wa Jalla says, "Huwa alladhi," and by talking about the mission of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, "Huwa alladhi baatha fil ummiyin rasul minhum yatlu alayhim ayatihi wa yuzakihim wa yuallimuhum al kitab wal hikma." Wa in kanu min qabl la fi zalal mubin. It is He, Allah Azza wa Jalla, who has sent the unlettered, reciting upon the people the ayat of Allah, waking them up. To the miraculous signs that he that are with ayat one. Where you him, cleaning them up. To tazkiyah. Why you allimuhum al kitab wal hikmah and teaching them the book and the wisdom. Look at the order Allah has given it. Look at the order Allah has given it. He's put learning the book of Allah, teaching them the book of Allah as point three. وَيُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابُ وَالْحِكْمَةِ is point three and four. وَيُزَكِّهِمْ is tazkiyah. Tazkiyah is the cleansing of that which is stemming the growth of the nafs. We all have a different series of circumstances. Ten people. Ten different individuals. Each individual will have a different set of circumstances concerning him. In terms of his family, his upbringing, his situation today. One person had two brothers and no sisters. He had three brothers and three sisters. He had no brothers and no sisters. He was born as an orphan. <coughs> his, his parents divorced. His parents uh, were rich. His parents were poor. He had a good upbringing educationally. He had a bad upbringing. He was, he was abused. All these will determine the makeup of an individual. People need to get cleaned up. You come to Iman now, you come to Islam, but you've brought with, it, with you to Islam all these circumstances. And each of you have brought each of your own circumstances to Islam. Now what needs to happen is the process of Tazkiyah is to wash you, clean you up, and make you ready in your hearts. So if people have sinned to make istighfar, if people have sinned to turn away from sin, because all these are 
things which have affected the heart. Your heart was white, nur, light. You sinned and you made it. You, made, you, you scarred yourself there with black. You scarred yourself there with black. He's got more black. He's got less, he's less dark. These are all things which have now scarred the heart. That now to get, need to get cured up. He'll, all these psychological, social uh, uh, dimensions to an individual all now need to get tazkiyah. And that's a whole science in Islam in and of itself. Your relationship with Allah centers completely here. Because it's your heart that speaks to Allah Azza wa Be scared about your heart. If Allah has diverted you away from, from trying to study and understand the meaning of the Quran to do other things, this is a bad sign. This is a bad sign if your heart is distracted. You see, when Allah Azza wa loves somebody, and he, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst those whom he loves the most, he'll inspire within him an interest with the Quran. Because the more closer he becomes, the more he'll understand, the more he'll practice, the more he'll be able to do more, do actions more, give more, sacrifice more, pray at night more. Subhanakallah wa bihamdika ashlallah ilaha illa an. Astaghfirullah wa tubu